Amen. Our call to worship today is from the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 28, where it says, Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful. And so worship God acceptably with reverence and with awe. Lord, we come this morning into your presence. We know that you are here, and we just want to worship you, not just with our bodies, but with our hearts, and with our souls. Help us to connect with you, God. Receive from us. We're here to give back to you. Receive from us our worship today in Jesus' name. Amen. There. Good morning, everybody. And good morning to everybody at home as well. You notice that today is a half an hour later service than we usually do. So if anybody at home, you have no excuse for still being in your pajamas right now. So get up, get dressed. Um, so the man just said, hope is here, right? Which is great. So whenever you, fa whenever you find yourself facing insurmountable odds when you feel overwhelmed, remember what Philippians 4.13 says. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. So just remember that you've got, you've got Christ in you. And if you, can, if, if you can tap into that Christ power, nothing is impossible for you. And this song is called, Yet Not I, But Through Christ In Me. Uh, you please stand. my 
As I mentioned, today we begin a, a brand new series, four weeks, called Hope is Here. And, and, and I would argue that that's one of the greatest needs we need and have in our lives right now, that especially after the, the season we've experienced and in some ways very much are still experiencing. Uh, but, but we need this sense of hope in our lives and in our world, right? And I, gotta, I know some of us, some of you have experienced some great loss over the last... Uh, year, year and a half. It, uh, it's been tough. I know some of them have lo- some of you lost loved ones, and we weren't even able to do justice in terms of a service that that uh, you know honors loved ones. And others have experienced other kinds of losses. And, well, um, some of us some of us may feel broken this morning, and. There's pain, and, and you know what? We've experienced pain in our, in our nation, in our world. Can we all agree that maybe we need a little bit of hope this morning, right? Um, I just read this article this week, and it, it, was, uh, it was titled, What Churches Are Finding with the Second Wave of COVID. And I hadn't heard that, that term before. That, you know, we've gone through all of this, and now there's this like second wave that seems to be happening and overtaxing our medical communities and everything else. And one of the things it said in that article, it was listing a number of things, that, that, that hopelessness was pervasive. Because you see, in, in the first wave of COVID, you know, a year ago, March, right? There was some hopelessness, but there seemed to be with that wave, at least we, there's, we, we're, there's an end. It may take a while, but there's going to come a point where it ends and things can get back to, right? And then this happened. And this happened. And, and so in that first round, we've, we've kind of felt, well, at some point this will be over, and now we're not so sure. Now it feels like, wait a minute, we're just right about there and snatch. You know, it, it was like, and I'm like, oh, you've got to be kidding me, right? And, so they were finding that, that there seems to be this greater sense. The truth is, we, we looked at this, this series because it it's happening with a lot of churches, so we're, we're part of that, and the themes are all been kind of set. And it, we actually, in the springtime, we're going, 
We've been talking a lot about hope over the last year and a half. Do we keep really wanting to do that again? And then we found out, no, yeah, we, we got to keep talking about this, right? Um, kind of reminds me, though, when we, we think about that hopelessness, there's an attitude and a perspective I think we need to have with, with all of this. So it reminded me of the story of um, there was a man attending a Little League baseball game and children are out on the field or in the dugout, you know, and they're playing their hearts out. And it's only the first inning, the, the, the first half of the first inning, okay? And the score was already 16 to 0. So one team is already losing by a landslide. And the man walked up to the dugout of this losing team and he asked one little boy if he was discouraged by the score. Had he lost hope? The little boy looked at him a little puzzled. He said, why would I be discouraged? We haven't even gotten up the bat yet. <laughs> right? There's always hope, see? And, and one way to look at the challenges as we face life, right, that, that is to have hope. The church has had throughout history the audacity to have hope in the face of trouble. And that all stems from the victory that Jesus Christ has at the resurrection. Because when things look the darkest for Jesus, as he hung on a cross, he knew it was far from over, right? That the tomb would not be the end, that he would defeat death, that he would come back to life. And with this as our church's backdrop, the church's backdrop, there's always a reason for hope. So in the Gospels, Jesus is always offering hope to people, right? Always offering hope to the people around him, whether it was from a crippling disease or, or an oppressive government or a physical or spiritual hunger or even an evil attack. Jesus would meet people right where they're at and give them hope. Right? Because here's the deal. People know that if Jesus is here, then hope is here. And that's the theme of this morning's message. If Jesus is here, hope is here. So here's the first point this morning, okay? Really encouraging point. Life is hard, right? Everybody say amen, right? It's, it's life is hard. See, there are, times, there are times when we need more than others the reminder that there's hope because we experience times in life that are just hard. Life circumstances have this way of just leaving us hopeless at times. And I would argue that there is nothing in life that can steal our hope more than when we find ourselves weary and tired and worn out, right? I would imagine that there's a number of us here today who know exactly what that feels like. Waiting for a diagnosis. Just found out yesterday, my sister had had a, an MRI for some uh, concerns, and week goes by, so she's heard nothing. So you know when you're waiting for that? Waiting room, like waiting for results, and something went wrong, and they had to do it, and it's just like, Weary, right? Or, or maybe it's paying bills or saving a marriage or enduring COVID. Uh, a couple of people I know, right, my congregation aren't here today because they were exposed and they're thankfully keeping you safe, you know, and just in case, and, and they're not here, right? Or just trying to grow spiritually, you know, we can get weary even in that. And, and, and there are times like this when we feel like we cannot keep going and what we want to do is give up because I am just so tired. Famous NFL football coach, Vince Lombardi, right? had a lot of pithy sayings, right? Fatigue makes cowards of us all. That's one of the things he said. I think he's, you know, there's truth to that. And, and Jesus is very much aware of our tendency to just want to shoulder heavy burdens that cause us to lose hope. So Jesus spoke to his followers about John the Baptist's faithfulness. Now remember, John the Baptist was uh, the forerunner of Jesus. It's Jesus' cousin, actually, and, 
and he was the one that came and said, prepare the way of the Lord, right? And, and he must increase and I must decrease. And he had his own disciples and they, a lot of them left John to go and follow Jesus, which is exactly what was supposed to happen. And, but then John got arrested by Herod and ultimately executed. And he's in prison now, and he's like, I did all of this, I helped in it, and I find myself in prison? Come on, God. What, what? And then he begins to lose hope, and he begins to question. Is Jesus really the one? Not, not that he was, he, he's questioning it because in the midst of his circumstances, he's going, I don't understand what's going on. So was I mistaken? Is Jesus really the one? And some of his followers still went and, and expressed this to Jesus. And so Jesus spoke to his followers about John the Baptist's faithfulness in the midst of prison and the questions that he was asking about Jesus' identity. That he was losing hope that whether or not Jesus was indeed the Messiah. And if his, his whole work, John's work, had been in vain. And in light of this, this is, these are the words that Jesus spoke and I'm going to read this, and, and I want to, can you just let Jesus talk to you this morning through these words? He says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Aren't those great words? What Jesus is doing, he's doing a couple of things in this passage. First, he's acknowledging that life can get heavy. Life can get really, really heavy. And, and, and a lot of times, you know, I know, you and I, we live, without, we live life without margin. And, and a lot of times we are very hard on ourselves. And, and we work hard at times to keep up with others around us. And we, we get weary. And actually, Jesus is kind of normalizing this for us. That, you know what? It was actually in another passage, Jesus said, in this life you'll have trouble. You'll have burdens. We're going to feel crushed at, at times, but that's not a failure. Jesus isn't going, what's up with you? That's not one of the passages where Jesus said, oh, ye of little faith. You know, he, He's recognizing that's where we are often in our lives. And when we do, we sometimes, see, if we feel like that's somehow our failure, then we shy away from going to God because there's some shame involved in that. And you know what? God wants us to come to him. We, 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 we want to avoid maybe being vulnerable with others as well. But Jesus tells us this, if, that if we are weary, we should come to him. He gives us this invitation to come. Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden. So he says, take this yoke upon you. And, and I'm not sure we know what that is. So uh, that's a yoke. So it's not an egg, right? right? And, and, um, that's a, that's a, an, an oxen yoke. Right? It's a harness that, that a farmer would attach in order to plow the fields and, and kind of yoke animals together. Here's, here's another picture of it being used, actually. So those are huge. Um, and those, those two oxen are yoked together with that wooden yoke. And that, would, that yoke would actually help keep the, the livestock safe as they worked together with the help that the, that, and they would submit, in essence, to the farmer because that was a, he was controlling that. And, and the farmer, in truth, could be cruel, a taskmaster, or he could be kind, right, to the animals, right? See, there were some people in Jesus' audience here who were submitting to a way of life that was law-based and very hard to live up to. It was a religious, legalistic yoke. And it just gets tiresome and wearisome. And 
or it's performance based. You know, I gotta, I, I gotta earn this somehow. You know, I gotta earn favor with God. And, or, or it's driven by our need to succeed, and it, it's a heavy burden. But the yoke that Jesus is offering here is one of grace and mercy and compassion and love. One yoke causes us to get weary, and the other causes us to find peace. And he invites us to remove whatever yokes that we have around our necks and take his yoke upon us because it is easy, it is light, it will give us rest. So the question to ask yourself is, is my yoke crushing or life-giving? Because Jesus offers us hope this morning for the weary by reminding us that our value, your value, is not found in how well you hold it together. Isn't that good news? Right? It's not how well we hold it together when things get tough or how we compare to the people around us. Our value comes from the love that he has for us and the grace that he gives. I read a story of a pastor struggling to find life in his relationship with God. And he, felt, he said, it felt like I was trying so hard to just keep all the rules, you know, and impress God with my holy life and that it was really just sucking the life out of him. And he was losing hope that he was worthy of the love of God. And that caused him to become very weary. He actually met with a mentor, shared with him his feelings and thoughts, and to his surprise, the mentor's response was that, and get this, you are a human being, not a human doing. I like that. You're a human being, not a human doing. It's about who we are, not what we do, right? Your worth to God is not found in how much you do, but in who you are. Love God. Love your neighbor. Let God handle the rest. And so the pastor traded his yoke of law for a, lo a yoke of love. See, if you find yourself worried today, weary, tired, right? Whether it's because of circumstances you cannot control or actually maybe situations that you've caused, right? I just want to offer you some hope today. I want, I want you to offer you hope for a better tomorrow, hope for true purpose, hope for, for a clean slate, hope for peace, hope for rest, because it's all found in Jesus, because where he is, hope is here, right? When Jesus is here, hope is here. And what's interesting, I think, about Jesus' illustration about a yoke is that a wooden yoke was, it was not typically, it can, but not typically worn by a single cow. It, it would have been in tandem with another, and they would work together to pull the plow. So can I make this other point this morning? In the church, we find hope when we also recognize we do not have to go through it alone. The rest that we find in Jesus is best experienced alongside of God's people. And that's the final point, that the church carries one another's burdens. We do that together. Paul's writing to the church in Galatia about the importance of living in community and with one another, and he makes a statement that when lived out, puts us in line with the invitation that Jesus has for us. He says, carry each other's burdens, and in this way, you fulfill the law of Christ. It's in caring about one another. So to live like Jesus, to aspire to be like Jesus, is to be willing to meet the needs of others. And when we see someone else in the church who is weary and tired and burdened, then we come to them. Because when we do that, it offers hope. 
burdens, you know, they come in all shapes and sizes. And some burdens are self-inflicted. We, we can help shoulder those burdens by offering someone grace or forgiveness or a willingness to help navigate to a better way. Some burdens happen to us. You know, a, a, a divorce we didn't ask for, a sickness that was unexpected, a job loss that's devastating. There, in these instances, we carry one another's burdens by just listening, bringing a meal, meeting a financial need. We've done this over and over, right, as a church through the years. So whenever there is a, a lack of hope in our community, we are called to carry each other's burdens. Here's the good news. When we love one another in that way, we fulfill the most basic law of Jesus. We love God with our whole heart, and then we in turn love our neighbors as ourselves. And Jesus actually said all the law, all the prophets, all those other things actually hang on those two commands. And that sounds like hope to me, loving God, <clears throat> loving each other. Because when Jesus is here, hope is here. And Jesus offers us rest and peace, and we don't have to do it alone. So when we invest in the relationships that God gives us within the church, we find help in living within our margins. Sometimes we need help. Sometimes we need help from someone to help us say no, you know? No to the things that drain our time and our attention or our resources. And sometimes we need someone to remind us that, that we are loved by God and that that's enough. And, and sometimes we need help from someone to help us slow down and just rest in the grace of God. So are you weary today? Are you burdened by life? Come to Jesus and find rest. You don't have to do this life alone. We're in this together. And that brings hope. So Lord, we come before you today, some of us very weary, very tired, greatly in need of rest. Help us to switch yokes. Help us to just Lord, trust in you, rest in you. Take the, take the time we need to just stop and be in your presence where there is hope. And thank you, God, that so often as we are your church, you're the body of Jesus Christ, the head of the church, it is also found through us as you work in us towards others. So Lord, help, help us to see Help us to see the burdens around us. Help us to respond. Help us to do what you call us to do, to encourage and love each other, God, as we seek to be more and more your church. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So today was hope for the weary. Next Sunday, just so you know, hope is it's going to be hope for the broken. Today's worry. Next week, hope for the broken. I would encourage you to read from the Gospel of John, chapter 8, the first 11 verses of that. There's a story there that we're going to talk about next week, and you can prepare for that by reading John 8. So we're going to, we're going to close the surface with, um, with a song that's got nothing to do with being weary, unfortunately. I do have one here. Though. Funny enough, I'm talking to you. Do you know, would you mind if we hijack the service to sing a song about being weary? Well, so I, I know that um, we, we, we've got a song here that is actually based on Matthew eleven twenty eight. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. That's not the song we're going to finish with, but I'm going to just do what, let's just do it quickly now. Is that all right with you? you however okay. the Spirit leads you. So we haven't got the words up, but you know, how, many, how often are you going to get a chance to sing a song about being weary? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's, that song I think, is so tired. Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. That was bad. <laughs> when my heart is broken, sorrow makes me weep. Anxious thoughts torment me, even in my sleep. 
Lord, I pray, come closer, ease my troubled mind. Let me rest my weary head on you. Even in the darkness, when help seems far away, I can feel you near me, rescuing my day, offering me comfort, a place to dry my tears. Let me rest my weary head on you. You are all I need. Be the strength in me. When I lay my burdens on you. You are all I need. Jesus said. Something about me I, I want you to know is I love to read. I would I would actually get in trouble as a kid because I was always reading a book and I my you know my mom would tell me to go to bed and I'd be under the covers with a flashlight reading a book and I'd they'd come in my parents would come in and catch me sometimes I'd get in trouble or put the book away and I just love to read. There was a a book thing that happened at school like Scholastic Book Club and you would get this this like sheet of all these books that you could pick from and and buy these books and they'd be ordered. I'd be waiting for them to come in and I would just love to read that, you know? So I don't know, what's what's your favorite book? Why don't you just tell someone, uh, if you're with somebody, just turn to them and tell them, what's your favorite book, okay? Uh, you know what, books are great because they can they can teach us things, they tell exciting stories. So when I was younger, when I it got one of those books from school, I got one that was called The Mad Scientist Club. This is a, a picture of the cover of the book, right? And I loved this book because it was about a, a group of guys that had this club and, and they, they had these adventures and, oh, they were great and they were funny and they were exciting. And, you know, I, I still love that book. So I, I love to read. And, uh, there's one book, one of my favorite books, actually my favorite book. It changed my life. Now, of course, you know probably what I'm talking about. It's the Bible. Um, man, this book is life changing. It's God's word. So everybody just say out loud, God's word. Good, good, good. The Bible the Bible is the greatest book of all time because it, it contains God's words to us. They're, they're helpful to lead us and comfort us and teach us and encourage us. And unlike 
any other book we read, guess what? The stories in the Bible are 100% true. That means they, they happen to real people in, in real life. All the people you read about in the Bible were real. Now, the Bible is actually not one book. It's, it's made up of 66 books in two sections, the Old Testament and the New Testament. There's 39 books in the Old Testament, 27 books in the New Testament. And yet, despite there being so many books in the Bible, God's Word tells one great story. The story of the Bible is all about this, this one true God that created everything and loves us so much that he sent his son Jesus to save us. And that's why the Bible here is the most amazing book. Because no matter how many times you read it, God always can teach us something new in here. So can we just thank God for the Bible this morning? Let's pray. God, thank you for the Bible. We are so grateful that you love us so much that you sent your son Jesus and you tell us all about him in the Bible. So Lord, help us to, to take the time to read your stories, to read about Jesus, and then to just learn and love you even more. Learn about you and love you even more. We, we pray this in Jesus' name. So good being with you today. I hope to see you soon. Have a great day.